football game plans best bets. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and we have an action-packed show for you guys today. We're going to jump into college football week two, as well as NFL week one. But let's start with some prop bets that I found on the NFL side that you want to keep an eye on. I know Cowboy fans tend to lay money on their beloved team regardless of the year, but this season, to me at least, the Cowboys have the most complete team in the NFC on both sides of the ball, and I think they have the makeup to go very far in 2020. At plus 1,500, it almost seems like a steal at this point. Although I think the Colts have the most well-rounded squad in the AFC South, Houston with Deshaun Watson just has that it factor about them, and I can trust him over Phillip Rivers if it came down to a game or two that separates them at the top. So I would most definitely take the plus 350 here. Pound for pound, the Arizona Cardinals have a very talented roster along with a revamped offensive line. And with the second year in Cliff Kingsbury's scheme, along with the defense that got healthier on the back end and more athletic within the front seven, I feel like they are this year's version of the worst to first, so to speak, to win the division. And this particular prop bet goes directly back to the first prop bet we talked about. Best believe if the Cowboys are going to the Super Bowl, it'll be because Dak Prescott has continued to elevate his game and play lights out hell. He nearly came close to winning this award as a rookie, finishing third in that regard. And as we keep this show rolling along, let's just jump right into week two of college football with some of the biggest bets that I see out there on the sporting lines this upcoming weekend. First, we head up to West Point where Army takes on UL Monroe. The Warhawks will cycle through a couple of quarterbacks in this ball game, but at the end of the day, they'll turn around and hand that football off to Josh Johnson, who's one of the best backs in the country. They also have a talented tight end in Josh Peterson, who figures to see his fair share of targets against that secondary. Now, Army is tough, but I don't think this one will be a blowout like last week, so I'm taking UL Monroe and the points. Syracuse faces a tough challenge in a North Carolina team that has an explosive offense led by sophomore sensation quarterback Sam Howell. The Orange have a few players that have opted out of the season, which puts them in a significant bind against the title-binded Tar Heels. This game will be about trench warfare and how much better Georgia Tech has gotten over last season in that regard, making that transition from Paul Johnson to Jeff Collins. I like Florida State's quarterback James Blackman, and I think between his leadership on offense and Marvin Wilson's ability to affect the game up front, they'll be able to cover against Georgia Tech. Quarterback Eric King makes his hurricane debut against UAB, who's coming off of a win last week against Central Arkansas. King is one of the most dynamic players in college football, a true plus one in the run game, but I think he's out to showcase his passing ability this year in that offense, and he'll have a chance to do just that against the secondary that gave up some big plays in the air last weekend. Charlotte takes on Appalachian State in Boone, North Carolina. The Mountaineers are looking to repeat as Sun Belt Conference champs this season. They have one goal in mind in this ball game: stop running back Trey Harbison from getting going. I think their defense will be up to the challenge, giving their offense multiple times with the football. Duke travels to South Bend to take on Notre Dame, and this is another matchup where point of attack play will be key. This could also be a great opportunity for new starting quarterback and Clemson transfer Chase Bryce to make a name for himself out there with the Blue Devils. Unfortunately, I think behind a stellar offensive line, Notre Dame's quarterback Ian Book will end up getting the headlines. As we wrap up today's show, let's move on to the NFL where it's week one opening weekend of the NFL season. So there's going to be a lot of unique lines out there. So let's just start from Thursday night and work our way through Monday night. The Kansas City Chiefs, the reigning Super Bowl champions, kick off the NFL season on Thursday night as they play host to the Houston Texans. And the Texans are nine-point underdogs. With the way these two teams played last year, both in the regular season and in the playoffs, I think we'll see a very close game. So take Houston and the points. Cleveland travels to Baltimore to take on the division rival, the Baltimore Ravens, who are looking to get to the Super Bowl like Kansas City if they can get over that hump. But first, they have to take care of the AFC North, and it starts with Cleveland. They're seven and a half point favorites. I do like the Ravens hitting on all cylinders starting the season because they can run the football and they play good defense and they have the reigning MVP at quarterback. Seattle travels out east to take on the Atlanta Falcons. They're two-point favorites, but this is going to be a very tough game because I think Atlanta has gotten better on the defensive side of the football and on offense with the addition of a guy by the name of Ty Gurley. So although the Seahawks are two-point favorites and they have the better quarterback in this ballgame, I like Atlanta here, so take the Falcons and the points. 
The Jets head upstate to take on the Buffalo Bills, who are six and a half point favorites in this ball game. Last year in the opener, the Bills shocked everyone by knocking off the Jets. But I do think when you look at Buffalo returning all five starters up up front along the offensive line in a defense that's still one of the best in the NFL, I think they'll take care of business and knock out the Jets. So lay those points with Buffalo. We now move on to the NFC North where the Chicago Bears travel to Detroit to take on the Lions. The Lions offense looks very good on paper and I think with a healthy Matt Stafford, they'll be able to cover this one against Chicago. Plus, you can trust Matt Stafford more than you can trust Mitchell Trubisky. Over in the other side of the division, you have the Green Bay Packers, two and a half point underdogs against the Minnesota Vikings. Now the Vikings went to a youth or went through a youth movement this offseason with the amount of draft picks they had and letting some veterans go, especially in that secondary. So we'll see a rebuilt Vikings defense. They did add Yannick Ngakwe, which should help out that pass rush as well across from Daniel Hunter. But I think Green Bay's rededication to the run game will allow them to pull off the upset in week one. Another big game in the AFC East features the upstart Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots led by Cam Newton. Now, the Dolphins have had a lot of fanfare this offseason, rightfully so. They've earned it. They've added some good players on that defensive side of the ball. Offensively speaking, Ryan Fitzpatrick, if he can play an efficient game, they have a chance. But unfortunately, I still like Bill Belichick. I also like a healthy and motivated Cam Newton to pull out a victory. Over in our nation's capital, you have a battle of point of attack play that's going to take place between the Washington football team and the Philadelphia Eagles. Which offensive line can hold up? Which defensive front can create havoc all throughout the game? Each week, there is one upset that happens in week one that no one saw coming. I'm a big fan of Dwayne Haskins and what he has put out there on the field late last season and throughout the course of this training camp. I think they shocked the Eagles, so take Washington and the points. Las Vegas travels to Carolina to take on the Panthers, and the Raiders are three-point favorites in this ball game, and rightfully so. They have a very athletic defense. Second and third level have gotten better in the offseason. On the offensive side of the football, they've added explosive playmakers at receiver to help out Derek Carr in that run game led by Josh Jacobs. But when I look at Carolina, I like their offense. I love the fact that they have McCaffrey, Bridgewater, and all of those weapons at receiver. I think they'll open this thing up. And again, we spoke about week one upsets. Here's another one. I like Carolina and the points in this one. Indianapolis heads to Jacksonville as eight point favorites against the lowly Jaguars that have let go a lot of their stars this offseason. And this one is as simple as the Colts not turning the ball over and shooting themselves in the foot. I think they'll take care of business. So lay all those eight points with Indianapolis. Next up, we go to Cincinnati, where they play host to the Los Angeles Chargers, who come in with some questions on offense, mainly at quarterback and in the backfield. Can Tyrod Taylor handle his business and keep that job for a full 16-game season? Can Austin Eckler be what they want in the backfield at the tailback spot, the lead dog at that position? Defensively, I think will be the key, although I like Joe Burrow and the Bengals getting better as the season goes on. This is a tough matchup for them defensively as far as pass rush is concerned, so lay the points with Los Angeles. The Saints open up their season at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as three and a half point favorites. And everyone's talking about the Saints offense, Alvin Kamara and that contract extension. And they're talking about Tom Brady and the Buccaneers offense with all of those weapons out there. But no one's talking about the defenses in this ball game. I envision a low scoring game. And I think the Bucs have gotten better in the secondary over the latter part of the season last year. But also what they've added this season with Antoine Winfield and company. I would take the Bucks in the points against the Saints. Huge battle in the NFC West between Arizona and San Francisco. The 49ers are seven-point favorites, and Arizona is looking to try to take over that division this year, second year in Cliff Kingsbury's scheme. And because they've added so many new playmakers and dynamic playmakers on defense, I think they actually match up really well, and that seven-point number is just a little bit too high for me. So take Arizona and the points. Dallas travels out to Los Angeles to take on the Rams as they open up SoFi Stadium in a beautiful venue to play football. The Cowboys still have the most complete team in the NFL, while the Rams are still working through their run game and trying to figure out who's going to be the guy who's healthy back there. Defensively, they're replacing some linebackers, so there's still some moving parts that have yet to be sorted out. With that being said, take Dallas in those three points. The first of two Monday night football games as Pittsburgh travels to New York to take on the Giants, and this is just a bad matchup for Big Blue as that young offense, that new offense under Jason Garrett, has to face this ferocious pass rush of Pittsburgh. So lay those points with the Steelers. 
And the last game of week one features two teams that are heading in the right direction, and it's a pick 'em game between Tennessee and Denver. And Denver will be without Von Miller, who suffered an ankle injury that may keep him out for the entire season. That puts a damper on what should have been one of the best pass rushing duos in the league. So yes, Tennessee does have a chance in this one, but I'm still going with Denver. I like their passing game. I think they will take flight in that mile high air on Monday night. So that's it for this edition of Football Game Plan's Best Bets. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Also subscribe on iTunes to Football Game Plan Podcast and leave us a five-star rating.